Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is James Gornett, and I'll be giving a brief introduction to the uh, basics in uh, machine learning. So just to review like, uh, everything we've been uh, going through in this course so far, so why is machine learning useful in science? Machine learning is useful because it provides many interpretations of our experimental data that we may not be able to find um, visually or through other kind of methods of like uh, visual inspection, uh, such as dimensionality reduction, um, linear encoding, and decoding models. So machine learning follows really three simple principles uh, to be a bit over reductive. The first is statistics and how do I model my question, computational mathematics or numerical analysis and how do we find efficient algorithms for modeling and solving our questions formulated through statistics and programming and how do we d implement these algorithms given by uh, numerical analysis. So I'll be starting with this kind of first module in machine learning statistics. So statistics, in a matter of speaking, is a form of inverse probability. We have some reality that we're trying to uh, ask questions about. And this reality has some, uh, can be formulated through some probability distribution. However, we can only sample a few of that uh, uh, samples from that probability distribution, and we do not know that uh, data generating distribution exactly. So the job of statistics is taking this data, uh, empirical data generating distribution, which is an approximation of this distribution, fit it to some probability model to get some idea of how reality works. No, uh, depends. There's no no physical reality that can be modeled by a probability distribution. If that can't be, um, quantum. yeah, quantum mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Um, but just to review a few probability identities. The first is independence. If two random variables are independent, we can uh, uh, factorize them. Conditioning, um, we can take a uh, factor out and uh, um, condition on a uh, variable. Marginalization, where we can take a, if we um, sum over all, uh, all kind of probabilities of a random variable, we could, fact, uh, can we eliminate it? An expectation where we could uh, take a take a where it's uh, we could just sum over the probabilities of the um, random variable. So every probability distribution tells a story, um, and these stories can vary over different uh, kind of experiments or different kind of uh, questions. For example, a normal distribution can, uh, kind of models the idea of if I uh, sum different noises that have different probability densities, it will eventually converge to the uh, normal distribution by the central limit theorem. In addition, the categorical distribution tells me if I sample uh, the different objects and they have different probabilities of occurring, what do I expect to see in that distribution? And the Poisson distribution uh, models um, kind of waiting time, or models uh, how many uh, events would occur if there's a probability of that event occurring uh, every, uh, every interval uh, and so seconds. In addition, every model, uh, every method in statistic has an implicit model of the world. For example, the some uh, more uh, simple methods such as linear regression models the world as a hyperplane, whereas um, more complicated uh, uh, methods such as like convolutional neural networks model relationships and data through pixel-wise um, uh, relationships that, uh, that get uh, increased in, in a hierarchical manner. 
So given these probability distributions, we want to find a distribution that's the closest to our data. And in order to do this, we employ a method called maximum likelihood. There are different methods in statistics to find uh, the kind of tr find the closest uh, distribution to the true data ge generating distribution. But this uh, maximum likelihood tends to be the most tractable computationally. Um, in this case, we have the uh, likelihood fun uh, function. And uh, given this, um, this function, the closer the, uh, um, our parameterized model is to the data generating distribution, the uh, higher its uh, score. So given these principles and statistics, we can imp implement them in an efficient manner using numerical analysis and computational mathematics. So one, uh, one method uh, to do this is called gradient descent to minimize or maximize a particular uh, uh, value function. In gradient descent, we can just take the derivative of the, uh, the um, likelihood function, and we could use this to find the minimum of a, this particular uh, function by iterating over the uh, derivative multiple times and descending uh, to its minimum. And by convention, typically gradient descent uh, is used to find the minimum, so typically we add a negative to the kind of likelihood uh, function and this is called the uh, cross entropy. So one example of how this method is employed is uh, in linear regression, which we uh, reviewed yesterday. In linear, uh, I mean, uh, logistic regression. In logistic regression, we have a logistic uh, distribution, which has this kind of sigmoid um, uh, characteristic. And in this case, we uh, assume that the uh, de uh, variables are dependent to depend on each other through linear relationships. And in this case, the likelihood function is uh, um, modeled using this equation. And it is given by this uh, kind of distribution story in that it, uh, we have an object that models two possibilities with probabilities y and one minus y. So, Moving on these principles, we can uh, see how these principles kind of uh, find their way into modern methods such as neural networks. And neural networks essentially are many linear transformations followed by nonlinear operations. This occurs in the most simple model, such as this uh, two-layer neural network, and the most advanced models, such as uh, language models. In the Significant power of these neural networks is that they are uh, feature learners. By having multiple layers in a neural network, we are able to capture larger and larger windows in these uh, in the uh, particular um, uh, sample of data and capture um, more complex features. In this kind of model of AlexNet. If you look at the convolutions, the uh, convolutions in the earlier layers mar model uh, uh, kind of activation similar to Gabor filters uh, can uh, identify lines and blobs, whereas the activations in later layers um, are able to identify uh, dogs, cats, and people. And so, um, one example of uh, employing this neural network, which we will uh, you in this uh, Jupyter Colab notebook is MNIST classification. In MNIST classification, we have data um, through handwritten digits from between zero and nine. And in these handwritten digits, we can model this using the uh, softmax distribution. A particular, particular number can have a probability of being, uh, having the identity between zero or nine. And so maximum likelihood provides a quanti uh, quantity for us to minimize um, in this case. So the model here is, the again, the uh, softmax distribution in a two-layer neural network. 
the likelihood function is given by this. Um, and so to employ a maximum likelihood, we can use and solve uh, kind of the best parameter set for a neural network. We can employ uh, the chain rule of calculus, uh, which is typically called back propagation. In this case, we, had, we could take the derivative of a, a function of a function or a variable with respect to a composition of two functions. And then it's given by this identity, where the, um, actually, there might have been a typo. Um, but this should be z given y. And yeah, but it, it, you can model this as using the chain rule. And this allows us to, in a forward pass, calculate a quantity. And to update the uh, weights, we could just perform a backward pass on this uh, quantity. And in the notebook, we will kind of derive a lot of these properties. This allows us to uh, derive these two kind of um, uh, loss functions and kind of gradients of these loss functions to update the weights to solve uh, and classify handwritten digits. So now we will move on to the uh, kind of programming aspect, and this will be in the uh, CoLab notebook. <laughs>